Dear friends, we saw in the previous chapter that the macular hole is not initiated by a vitreous traction or contraction, but by an ischemia, probably corridor ischemia. Now, let's see how to treat this condition. And uh, since we are talking about surgery, there is only mineral water left to encourage. As I said in the chapter on macular edema, I have been systematically removing the ILM in macular hole since 1991. I even think that I am the one who initiated this concept. But I don't want any credit for that for two reasons. First, because I had no merit. I did it spontaneously without thinking since I was already removing the ILM in epirital membrane for three years, thanks to the operating slit lamp of the microscope. But also because during the first 18 months, I did not even inject gas. I remember I was a, at a congress of on macular edema organized in Lyon by Mireille Bonnet in 1993. It was the beginning of the macular hole surgery. Before 1991, the macular hole was considered incurable. It was retrospectively a very educational period. Some surgeons were injecting gas without vitrectomy with a success rate of 20 to 30 percent. Others performed a vitrectomy with the, the, the vitreous cortex ablation and gas injection with up to 50% success. There were even some who started to inject TGF beta 2. And no one except me was removing the ILM. But I was not aware of the need to inject gas. And I presented a series of 42 cases of ILM peeling without tamponade and 24 anatomical success, that is to say seven, uh, seven, uh, 57%. And I heard Michel Convers saying to me, but Didier, why don't you inject gas? Everyone, everyone does it. And I returned back to Nantes to do the same procedure, but associated with gas injection. Why I am telling you this anecdote? This is because it allows us to understand the wanderings of some of our colleagues in the choice of the right surgical procedure to perform. Because everything works, more or less, but everything works. By what mechanism? The gas, even injected alone, after having disorganized the vitreous, will work because it offers a proliferation plan to the glial reaction and allow it to close the inner edge of a small hole superficially the rest closing under the effect of the RP pump effect. Removal of the posterior haloid when it is still attached to the macula works because it allows the traction that keep the hole open to be relieved, released. This will give flexibility to the retina. In addition, and it is followed, as we have seen, in 50 to 75 percent of cases by involuntary tearing of small flaps of hilem, it will be accompanied by a small hilem peeling like effect, which boosts its action. Finally, 
the removal of the ILM will have the same consequences as those described in macular edema, in addition to the flexibility given by the ablation of the vitreous cortex, the ILM removal will complete the effect by removing the rigidity of the ILM, the only rigid structure of the neuroepithelium. It will cause a stimulation of EGFR, generating, as we have seen, a gliosis of the Müller cells, uh, which, by increasing in volume, will fill a part of the hole while the astrocytic reaction increases following the proliferation, proliferation plan offered by the gas bubble or by the ILM flap in case of inverted flap technique. But the big action that the ILM peeling will bring, in addition to the simple ablation of the vitreous cortex, is all of these protective and repairing mechanisms that the stimulation of EGFR makes it possible to obtain. This is what makes the difference that many have not yet understood. The ILM peeling is not only useful to increase the percentage of anatomical closure, but it also, and above all, allow to improve the quality of functional recovery. But let's go back to the main topic of this chapter, how to treat a macular hole. After the success of the ivrs rd study and the ivrs me study, in 2012, I initiated the ivrs macular hole study and here followed the main lessons that can guide us in choosing the procedures to adapt. 4,207 cases of macular holes with a minimum follow-up of one year were referred by 140 retina specialists from 28 countries. Italian statisticians under the direction of Barbara Parolini, studied 30 different variables. Note that the size of the hole could not be studied due to the lack of precise calibration in hole measurement. And let's go first to anatomical healing, the hole closure. 14 variables likely to influence the hole closure rate were analyzed by multivariate logistic regression. And here, in descending order, the four statistically significant predictors of hole closure. As you can see, surprisingly, the ILM peeling did not appear as an analyzable variable. This is because in our series, everyone was removing it. We were unable to find a statistical different, statistically significant different, because only 39 cases out of 4,200, 4, less than 1%, did not have a voluntary removal of the island. And by the way, these cases had a catastrophic hole closure percentage. Now let's see the significant variable. First of all, the stage. The earlier the stage, the fewer failures. Four times more failures at stage four than at stage one or two. Nothing surprising. A parameter that often goes along with the stage is the delay before operation. The earlier the operation, the better the results. The first advice, therefore, arises from these two variables. Do not wait. A macular hole is a semi-emergency that must be operated 
on within eight days. It is inadmissible to see a macular hole scheduled at three weeks. The use of dyes promotes success, but the number of cases studied did not allow us to find any significant difference among the dyes. Now, let's finish with the fourth variable, the tamponade. Difficult to study this variable because it involves, at the same time, the type of the gas used, the quantity of gas injected, its concentration, the positioning requirements, as well as the positioning durations. Things get more complicated when you know that a beginner surgeon will be more likely to make a full gas exchange followed by a strict positioning to be more secure, while a very experienced colleague can inject air on an inverted flap without positioning or, a partially, or perform a partially filling with a simple request not to look up. It would have needed more than 10,000 cases to answer all the questions. Having only 4,200 cases, we could not identify any significant difference according to the type of gas or to the post-op positioning. The variables which appear to be significant were the best result obtained by an incomplete exchange with simple recommendation not to look up and a positioning limited in time to four to five days. But nevertheless, difficult to extract from these results the influence linked to the surgeon experience which could not be studied as a variable in its own right and which remains, for me, a statistical bias. I will tell you in the next chapter the reflections that led me to make a free cc injection of 50% SF6 without strict positioning. But now let's look at the functional results. They impose improve over time. The number of patients with an improvement greater or equal to three lines is 41% between three and six months, 52% between six and 12 months, and 59% after one year. This confirms, as has been said for functional results after macular, whole surgery, macular edema surgery, that Muller cell gliosis and all the other mechanisms generated by stimulation of EGFR take time to repair the damage. 16 variables can influence the quality of functional recovery and four of them have a statistically significant influence. First, and even if it may seem obvious and it deserves to be said, the good anatomical results of the surgery. On this diagram, where the acuity is reported as a function of time, you have in red the curve when the hole is, cl is closed and in, in black when it remains open. Preoperative visual acuity also plays a role, as it does for all macular pathologies. We saw that in the edema chapters. This diagram is a little more complex. It represents, depending on the preoperative visual acuity in logmar marked on the abscissa, the visual improvement in logmar line with blue, green, and red results as a function of time. The higher the preoperative visual acuity, the less the gain generated by the operation. But 
make no mistake, if the gain obtained is greater in case where the preoperative visual acuity was lower due to a delay in intervention, the fact remains that final visual acuity is still better if the patient is operated on earlier. And if we visualize the chance for the patient to obtain at least 2040, that is to say, a comfortable reading vision, it is clear that one should not wait to operate on the patient. Functional results are also depending on the stage of the macular hole. The more advanced the stage, the worse the result. They are also conditioned by the delay before operation. The longer the patient waits before surgery, the lower the final visual acuity. The macular hole is therefore a surgical semi-emergency, both in terms of anatomical results and of functional results. As for the post-op operative consequences, 26% of phatic eyes had cataract surgery within two years. And if we are trying to find out whether it's better to, to do, to conduct a combined surgery, we may be disappointed by this statistic where 1,033 combined surgery were compared to 1,083 simple operations followed by FACO in a second step. It seems that the gain obtained and the final visual acuity are better if you do not perform a combined surgery. 3.6% retinal detachment has been reported in the follow-up, as well as 3.2% retinal tears without detachment. A multivariate analysis has shown that the placement of troca is a protective factor against the risk of tearing. Conversely, performing a complete vitrectomy and an extensive removal of posterior haloid are risk factor for retinal tears. Here then, dear friends, are the result of the largest study on macular hole even carried out in the world that Barbara Parolini conducted and presented at the Iveres Congress in 2013. This study confirms in all points the recommendation I have been able to give for 25 years. Operate without delay. If possible, do a partial vitrectomy. Don't lift the posterior haloid beyond the equator. Use a dye. Remove, of course, the ILM on the posterior pole, and if possible, perform a partial fluid gas exchange with a positioning that allows you to tamponade the hole for four to five days. In the next chapter, I will give you my thought and some little practical tips for operating on macular holes.